In this video, I'll show you how you can make high key style images using just a single light and working in a very small space. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you might be aware that I often shoot here inside my small home studio. But I'm aware that this space is luxury for a lot of photographers, so I'm going to make it smaller. My background is about 8 feet across, so I figured a 10 feet wide by 10 feet long shooting area is a pretty good representation of the sort of space you might have on a temporary studio setup, for example, in your front room. To make it even more challenging, I've decided to do high key for the look, which is really hard in a small space. So I know I'll need to lean on Photoshop a bit, and we'll get to that later on. And I know that the process I'm going to apply will make my pictures more washed out in colour and brighter. The good news is it's a really quick and simple technique, but if you know something like this is going to happen in post-production, you can bear that in mind when you're reviewing your shots during the shoot. So let's get a light set. It's actually just going to be that one light throughout. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Gracie. Gracie is going to be the model for this shoot, but let's talk about the background first. So this is a high key shoot, hence I've got this white-ish background. Now the background is actually hand painted by Sam. Her artistic talents came in very handy. Next we need to think about lighting. So for lighting, in my small space, I'm using a small flash. It's the Flashpoint Evolve 200, and it's in a small softbox. This is a 24 inch softbox, which should give us a couple of things. It should give us a reasonably hard shadow, but still quite soft. That's going to come in very handy later on. And because of the design of the softbox, it's quite a wide spread of light, which in a small space is a really good thing if you want to do a shot like this. But what about the position of the light? Well, if you're really tight on width, then the obvious place to put the light is here above the model, but in line with the camera. It may not be the best place, but if your width is restricted, this will work. Let's have a look at this shot. First thing to do, of course, is to work out the exposure. So I'm going to shoot at f4 today, so let's make sure that the flash matches the camera, and we'll see what we get. I'm going to pop this underneath your chin, Gracie, and I'm getting f2.2, so that needs to be a little bit brighter. f4, absolutely perfect. Let's take a picture, see how it looks. Here we go. That looks absolutely great. We've got a nice light coloured background, good exposure on Gracie, but there's not really much shadow because of course the shadow is falling down directly behind her and this setup really works well with some shadows. So instead of having the light above Gracie, I've moved it to the side. This might need a bit more width if you're tight for space, then it may not work, but we've got three metres square, ten feet square to play with. What it's going to do is push a shadow over to the side of Gracie and the more I move it around, the further this shadow will drift out and it's the shadow that I'm looking for. So I might move the light around whilst we're shooting, but I will check the exposure. Every time you move the light, it's worth double checking the exposure. Remember, I'm shooting at f4. I'm going to pop this under your chin and I'm still getting f4. So that's absolutely perfect. Let's take a test shot, see how this looks. Awesome. You can look straight at me, head straight up, that's great. Yeah, and that's great, we've got a fantastic shadow behind Gracie. It's defined, but it is still soft. That's exactly what I'm looking for, for this setup. Okay, so that's the lighting sorted out. Now to make this more interesting, we need to grab some props. So Gracie, are you ready? Right, let's do the shoot. What should we start with? Cross your legs over. That's good angles, excellent angles. It's really close, but I'm still just inside that 10 feet line. That's great, that's really good placing right up against the line here. This is as far back as I can go. So, 
<laughs> yeah, love this. Well, that went really well. It was great to see some of my circus props from an old workshop get recycled in a brand new shoot. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said that the post-processing was a really important part of the look of the final image and that it would be really straightforward and simple. So it's time to put that to the test. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's one of the images I want to edit. And although it's correctly exposed and has loads of color, it's not really that high key washed out look that I'm after. So to achieve that, I'm going to change the layer and I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to give this a name. You don't have to. I'll call it mono, which might give you a clue as to what we're going to do, because I'm going to take away the color by going to image adjustments and desaturate. That will make this new layer black and white. So I've got two layers, one that's black and white and one that's color. I want to blend them together. So here on the layers panel, I'll change the blending mode from normal to screen. Now screen always makes your images brighter, which gives me that high key look. And because we're blending black and white and color, it washes out the tones, the colors. So it's a bit strong for my taste. I'm going to take the opacity for that mono layer down to about 70% or thereabouts. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Two layers, one blending mode. Now, of course, there's plenty of other ways you could achieve similar results. And there's always a bit of room for fine tuning. So in this case, I think I'd like to increase the contrast a little bit. So let's go back to layer. I'll add a new adjustment layer, choose brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to increase the contrast a touch. because I'd like a little bit more depth, particularly in these shadows. Now, the shadows I put there on purpose. I chose a soft box to give me a nice soft edge, but defined shadow. So it makes sense to highlight that. And of course, that helps with the 3D feel of the picture. And with a bit of fine tuning, there it is. There's my final picture completed. Well, there's no getting away from it. 10 feet by 10 feet is not a lot of room to shoot in. But don't let small space be the excuse for limiting your imagination. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment below. And of course, click on the subscribe button and the bell icon to get regular notifications of all the new videos right here on Adorama TV. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.